What is up, everyone? Welcome to Today's News Tonight, episode 48, which I was mistaken about just before we started. It is Friday, finally. I feel like this week has been the longest week in the history of weeks, but before I go down that rabbit hole of depression, I am joined, as always, by my co-founders in Good Vibes Gaming, Ash Paulson in the upper left, Derek Bittner in the upper right, and of course, I'm your host, Steve Bowling. You know me. I'm down here on bottom. It isn't last year tonight, but we're doing it the same way anyway. Uh, with that said, Steve, I don't know who you're talking about. I I don't know who Ash Paulson is. My name is first name Donatello, last name Turtle. Oh know. damn! I didn't even realize the. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. How do you recognize the, the, the Donatello swag. thing? You need to cut holes in that that what the, that white. I know. You can have your eyes <laughs> I should through. actually. Uh, maybe I should do that. That's a good, wow, good that, idea. Maybe I will. Yeah, to break room arcade in the chat, that beanie is ten out of ten. Fully agree. <laughs> that is excellent. Well, <laughs> I didn't even realize until you called it out. Um, before I'll show we get you a preview of another one I had before we. Uh, oh, oh my gosh! Shit. But I, got I love more, it. So. A- Ash scalped his father and <laughs> is wearing his skin. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. Quarantine. There can be only a one. Wild. Nice. Griff says, "My toe. My toe. Very nice." Very nice. <laughs> nice. Before we get too far into the episode, we do have a sponsor. Uh, this episode, as so many Friday episodes before it, is sponsored by Straight Lace and the Soul Device. Uh, the Soul Device is a puzzle platformer where the player can create temporary platforms by shooting projectiles onto walls at the cost of HP to explore a Metroidvania-style environment. It's available now on Steam and is presently 80% off for the Lunar New Year sale. Wow. Also, if you choose to pick it up, the developer Straight Lace would appreciate any feedback you have as he's currently developing the sequel and hoping to make it as fun and enjoyable as it can be. I am nice. going to make a solemn oath on this episode of TNT that I will play this game over the weekend and come back on Monday with some with some opinions about it. But I do remember that Straight Lace added the ability to pet a dog in the end of the game just based on what he heard on this show. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you do play it, make sure to hit Straight Lace up. Let him know what you think. Uh, because by the he's... way, the soul device is S O L. Yes, sorry, S O L device, and there will be a link down in the description for the VOD version of this, uh, to where you can pick it up on the Steam store. Uh, but thanks, as always, to Straight Lace for sponsoring this Friday's episode of today's news tonight. Uh, with that, there's Thank been a you very much Straight Lace. <laughs> I thought I thought we wouldn't have a lot to talk about. I I had pitched to the guys. I was like, hey, why don't we just not do news and just vibe today? But so much happened in the last there's a fair hours. amount i don't think any of it's huge on its own but there's at least something that you know, there's st- topics to talk about and i think yeah. we can make still make this a pretty um casual episode because yeah of that. Yeah. yeah we're we're gonna um, probably power through these because we got other stuff to talk about today yes and also quick warning uh just just to let everyone down early there will be no ep dance today uh some of you may have seen on t- twitter i slept wrong somehow and I'm doing that whole thing where my neck is a wreck. Like I have searing pain anytime I try to move my neck. So I'm doing like the whole full body Batman, Batman turn like this. So there will be no dancing today, but hopefully my neck will be in, in dancing. You needed the Batman again beanie. come Monday. I know. Yeah, right? I need that's Batman true. Beanie. Yeah. 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 I am Michael Keaton. <laughs> <laughs> I am Michael Keaton. Yeah, we, Eddie uh, Beal says TNT becoming TM, TMNT. That's uh, nice. No, wow. That's, about that. Damn. How yeah. did we not? come up with that i know right <laughs> that's <laughs> well done um so yeah we we have a just some kind of light news today but we'll let's go ahead and get the first story up and we'll talk about this real quick so this this is an update on one of our stories that we talked about on the last episode uh there were rumors which derek uh was able to give us some breaking news of the non-ep variety but uh, mm-hmm. We were speculating as to who would be tapped to play Joel in the Last of Us series on HBO, and it turns out, like, right after the show ended, they they confirmed that Pedro Pascal uh, would be the starring as Joel. I'm not super familiar with Pedro Pascal, but just looking at the side-by-side really? shot, which we have on screen now, it's a pretty good likeness. <laughs> I'm actually surprised the you haven't seen it. Have you, have you seen, um, I'm, I'm guessing you've not watched Game of Thrones? I have. Who who did he play in Game of Thrones? He was um, the guy who fought the mountain and uh, got his head crushed. Oh wow! Okay, so he was he was that. I'm forgetting his name. It's been so long since I've watched. So he was a fan favorite there. And have you watched The Mandalorian? No, I have not seen even one uh, okay. episode. Well, he's the Mandalorian. That's where he's gotten a oh, nice big thing boost. Well, that, yeah. that I feel better now. <laughs> Oh, so, that's right. He's also the villain in Wonder Woman 84. So he's becoming, haven't seen that either. Um, 
I, yeah, I haven't seen that. Yeah. Either. I've not heard good things. Uh, so, Oberon Martell, that's it. I'm not the biggest fan of this because of Wonder Woman 84. I'm sure he's an amazing actor, and the likeness, as you said, Steve, is definitely Watch there. the others. But I didn't, I didn't watch Game of Thrones, and I haven't watched Mandalorian. Uh, but I did not like him at all in Wonder Woman 1984. And that movie itself was just kind of meh anyway. But I did not enjoy his acting at all in that movie. So I'm a little on the fence about this, I, but... I can vouch for it. He's very good. I was going to okay. say, I, I liked enough. him in Game of Thrones. I remember him okay. in Game of Thrones, and he did a great job there. Um and, and to be fair, when I say I haven't seen Wonder Woman 84, I should be clear that I watched like the first 10 minutes of Wonder Woman 84 and my <laughs> wife and I both just noped out of it really quickly because it see it, it was just so cheesy from the get-go and I thought it was a bit. I was thinking, oh, well, you know, they're they're clearly, clearly doing some over-the-top like dumbass <laughs> stuff to and, and it will be revealed that it's a set piece within the movie and nope, that was just real stuff going on. We were both, we, we just changed it. <laughs> we decided that Yikes. we weren't going to waste our, right. our valuable time. Uh, it was very yeah. average. It, it was just like the story took forever to go Which anywhere. Which is weird because I remember really enjoying the first one. That's why I was so shocked really? when yeah. the reviews came out and it was apparently bad. The first I'm one like, was great. Yeah. I've seen the original Wonder Woman. It was very, very good. 84 yeah, just it's like the only really good DC movie I would say. Oh that oh, I know Shazam was good. I didn't see it but I know Shazam, Shazam was, was good. Shazam, Shazam yeah. was Shazam good. was all yeah. right. I watched Ooh, okay. I watched it on a plane and I did not love oh, okay. it. But I, anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. By the way, the, you will, you will like uh Pedro Pascal as an actor is just one it seems like one of the nicest guys out there. A story recently came out about him um where his uh I forgive me. It's been a while since I looked at this sister. Uh, looked at the article. I'll I'll just keep it piece. I'll try try to keep it as vague as possible because I don't know the specifics. His sibling came out as trans, and he they they they, they said um, that they had the courage to come out that way because of his support. He was supportive of the oh, that's entire. Awesome. Oh, well so then he he's is, Joel. Great, he's Joel. Then that that's good enough for me. <laughs> but that's, he's but he's my new Joel. But that's the funny thing. Also, is that people are like. Pedro Pascal is always so well known for playing very likable guys. How is he going to play? That's funny. Guys, you're probably not supposed to like like Joel, <laughs> right? Yeah, you Joel. Know, yeah, that was it's, an interesting, yeah, interesting thing. Uh, our our friend and former TNT guest uh, Imran Khan tweeted about the tweeted about Joel, and he was saying something to the effect of, and I'm deeply paraphrasing here, but he said. If if you like Joel, I, I'm gonna have to question question your uh, character because it is true. It, it's really interesting because when you think about it, on a micro level, it's easy to see Joel as a nice guy because mm. he's taking care of this girl who is being hunted, and do, you know is very fatherly toward her. But if you if you examine Joel on a more macro level. He is one of the worst human beings <laughs> ever. <laughs> uh -huh. I mean, the world is bad. in ruins. He has the opportunity to save it and chooses not to, to make himself feel better against the wishes of the person he saved. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it, it's well, just, we uh, think, right? She never really had the chance to weigh in. That's the problem is we mm, don't really know. You should play. Well, I should say, sorry, <laughs> yeah, I, I should say, well, then I am. I'm closing it on the end of part two. I should say she didn't have a chance to weigh in at the time. As far yeah. as I know, maybe she did. Um, but no, I, I'm actually closing in on the end of Last of Us Part Two, and I was gonna say, like, removed from everything he does in The Last of Us, Joel does seem like the kind of guy that I'd like to kick back and have a beer with and just listen to his stories. But with the context <laughs> of everything he does in The Last of Us, not so great. And I don't know if this is something that does eventually happen, but I'm glad that you don't get the chance to see Joel's reaction to Ellie's sexuality, because I'm not sure if it would go over well. And I, that would break my heart if he if he wasn't supportive. So I'm I'm glad that hasn't been a thing yet, and it seems like it's not, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I I don't know, but no. my yeah I I don't know. Joel is an interesting character to analyze. I feel like he uh yeah I I feel like that that hypothetical scenario where you're talking about having a beer with him. Could you imagine you're sitting in a post apocalyptic bar having a beer with Joel, <laughs> and he's like, all of this, yeah, it's my fault. Just... That's true. Well, that's why I said you removed don't... from the context of The Last of Us. In a non-post-apocalyptic well, yeah, world. Yeah, but it didn't become post-apocalyptic because yeah. he seems exactly. like a good dad. 
Yeah, yeah. before the apocalypse. Yeah. Exactly. He seemed like a really good dad before the apocalypse, right? So, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, we could we could probably talk about Joel, but there <laughs> I have a similar casting wise. I'm very happy with both yes. Ellie and a Joel. I yeah. think the casting is really good. I have high hopes for this thing. We'll see if it takes. We'll see if it does well. Yeah, and I think it will. <laughs> it's interesting to have two Game of Thrones actors <laughs> playing playing the I main know. roles in uh, The Last of Us. I, I still need to see um, the other uh, show that the actress is in because she. I think she's one of the actresses in um, uh, His Dark Materials, which I love the books, but I've not seen the oh, show okay. at all. Um, I just. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm curious how that, that show ended up. Yeah, I'm cautiously um, optimistic, <clears throat> though, about The Last mm -hmm. of Us. Same here. I think I, I think there's a lot of potential for it to be a good series, a good TV series. And I'm certainly going to be watching it and checking it out because I'm such a big fan of uh, the first game, but also the second game now that I'm finally finishing it pretty soon. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing how they adapt it. Uh, really quick, I want to extend a warm welcome to Emil Shabab, uh, Shahab, excuse me, Emil Shahab Hello. in the chat. Hey. I don't recognize your name, so just wanted to say welcome to our live audience, and I hope to see you here for many more episodes to come. Yeah, likewise. Absolutely. Thanks thanks for joining. Uh, so let's move on to a second piece of really confounding <laughs> weird news. Uh, I'm going to throw that up yeah. on the screen now. <laughs> uh, so this comes by way of Serapy, and uh, basically the tweet says it all. The Pokemon Company to host a virtual concert featuring Post Malone on Pokemon Day starting on February 28th. What? Huh. <laughs> I thought it was weird when I saw Posty in, in Bud Light ads, but this might be <laughs> this might be even stranger. I'm just not I, quite sure what to make of this. I mean, I uh, first experienced, really experienced Post Malone with the New Year celebration uh from 2019 into 2020 and he was part of that whole thing. And I was just happy with family and Amy and we're just that, you know, they had his song, uh, I think it was circles uh, being the thing that ring in 2020. And we're both like, that's a weird, that seems like a weird song. It seems so dour. And then 2020 happens like, Oh, it was a, it was foreshadowing because we were just <laughs> running in circles in 2020. That was okay. It's a, it makes sense. Um, I, he's, he's such a weird guy at least the way he looks so it's like seems yeah. like such a, you wouldn't think a guy with that many facial tattoos would be a good fit for pokemon <clears throat> but i don't know we'll see how this concert ends up i, I mean i don't mind the song circles but it's also not a thing i watch a lot of his stuff yeah listen to a lot of stuff yeah stuff. i know his name and that's about it I, I know of him i know he exists and is a thing but I have never heard one of his songs, so I really don't have any opinion here. I've... I mean, I, I hope he does a great job, I guess. So what I know of Post Malone, one, I actually kind of like his... I'm, I'm not like a huge Post Malone fan, but I like his his music that makes its way onto the radio. Although, mm -hmm. and, and I will say one thing. I, I agree with Derek that I never would have kind of put the whole face tattoo, gold teeth thing with Pokemon in it from a branding perspective, <laughs> right. but I'm impressed mm. that they're open-minded enough at the Pokemon company to partner with them. Uh, just because like Derek said, it doesn't seem like the type of image that they would vibe with, but you know, as, as we all know, face tattoos, gold teeth, whatever does not make the person right. That's of course. You, you can be a wonderful person and, and be completely modified from head to toe. Um, but it is kind of one of those things that corporations, corporate entities have traditionally shied away from. Uh, so I think right. it's kind of cool that they're doing that. Uh, the thing that surprises me more is that his music is, I mean, it's obscene. <laughs> like, he, does it, he, he raps about doing drugs and having sex, and that's cool. I mean, you know, I enjoy the music for what it is, but I definitely don't think, man, Pikachu and this. Right. Like, let's put those together. Right. Uh, I'm looking at... Uh chad and they all seem to be pretty uh pretty positive on him at least where he came from because they're like he had a song in into the spider verse yeah at least heard that uh right. brandon um saying he was on good mythical Mor morning once and it was one of the best episodes they ever put out seems like a great dude so yeah uh, was... and even pokemon themselves says i think he still carries around a game boy color so he can play pokemon red so he seems to be a genuine fan yeah i was gonna say that post uh streams on twitch 
regularly and he seems oh. like a very laid back chill dude when he's on stream he's not over the top he's not crazy uh he plays a lot of call of duty i've heard the anecdote about pokemon with him too so i mean i I guess this might be another one of those cases of a celebrity approaching a brand and being, hey, I'm a huge fan of yours. I'd like to work together. And, you know, maybe somebody in the marketing department at the Pokemon company assume, assumedly wisely thought, wow, this guy <laughs> this guy has a, a bigger reach than we do at the moment. So maybe this would mm. be a good way to bring some more people over. Um, and to answer Eddie Beal in the chat, they did also announce a collaboration with Katy Perry. I do wonder if there is a connection. Right. This, yeah, this could be, this might be a very interesting um, virtual concert because what else are they going to, it's not, right. it probably isn't just Post Malone. Yeah. The, the and I mean, thing, hey, there, there is, oh, go ahead, Steve. I was going to say the thing I find most interesting about this is that we still don't know anything about game related <laughs> uh, other than new Pokemon snap. And I do believe that they did say something to the effect of there will be game announcements or not at the concert per per se, but, uh, Oh, I'm sorry. The specific wording is Pokemon company confirmed announcements across the franchise during the anniversary week, whatever that means. Yes. But I mean, basically they got, they're going to announce right. a bunch of things during the week of the, uh, the, you know, right. leading up to the 28th towards Pokemon day. So we're going to get probably stuff across, you know, the next, the next movie, the, probably maybe next card set, maybe the next, you know, game, who knows? We don't, we don't really yeah. know. Uh, we might even get uh, like a, just out of nowhere, shadow drop of what is that Pokemon unite that we're working on. Yeah. Oh, right. I forgot about that. I, uh, Flaming uh, Highwayman says, guys, I think Hatsune Miku is next. I would be so hyped, oh, ironically, to watch Miku sing about Pokemon. Are you kidding me? I would be so down for that. Um, all this said, there is there is precedent for this. You know, we did get Coolio in the, in the trailer for Sonic the Hedgehog. So, you know, yeah. rappers and video games. The first trailer, that this... <laughs> well, that's... They got, he was not in that uh, soundtrack after that, though. That's No, but in the first trailer, yeah. And uh, yeah, so there is some precedent here. Yeah, that and that is an interesting thing. It is worth noting because we've talked about this kind of thematically on different episodes of the show, but adults now all grew up with video games. We are the first generation of adults that grew up playing video games. And so it only makes sense that some of these folks would go on to be celebrities and, and still right. carry their love of video games with them. I know personally, if I somehow had stumbled into fame for whatever reason, I can't really imagine. But if I had become famous, made boatloads of cash, I probably would have just retired and kept playing video games. <laughs> right. uh, so, you know, I, good, on, good on these celebrities that, that are able to leverage their positions in society to partner with companies that they've long admired. Because I think that's cool. I think anybody in their position would do it. So I, I think this is cool. I, I applaud the Pokemon company for being pretty forward thinking in regards to uh, Post Malone. And I think that while while I still don't, it doesn't make a ton of sense to me still <laughs> as a fan. Uh, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm intrigued enough to at least see where this is going. Katy Perry is, is way out of my wheelhouse in terms of things I enjoy. But I know a few of Post Malone songs. I like them. And I definitely will be at least tuning into the concert to see what it's all about. Sure. Yeah, I will yeah. be too. Might be a fun thing to even, depending on how long it is, might be even be a fun thing to stream. Oh, just, like, man. To. So, Maybe, but that also, that's a... Uh, although... That is a copyright issue. strike waiting yeah. to happen. Yeah, yeah. That, is, yeah that, is, that is just something like that. As, yeah. If they had an official co-stream program, then I would definitely that consider would be it because we sure. could appeal it. But, I mean, we yeah. got hit with a couple, not, not strikes, but claims on our... Game Awards videos <laughs> on our right, Game Awards that. stream. We got yeah. like five claims and we were yeah. official co-streamers. Right. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's real. Uh, it's real sticky doing that kind of stuff. I mean, we still have two claims on the uh, Capcom stream we did a while back for Resident Evil 8. So <laughs> that's uh, Which is I mean, that's Capcom. Fun. Capcom is yeah. usually get a little. Yeah. And to be fair, to Capcom's credit, we didn't apply to be a co-streamer or anything. Apparently they right. do stuff like that now too. Mo more recently with something that honestly isn't worth covering much but uh they they had co-stream applications for the street fighter 5 winter update which was a big <laughs> sorry if you're uh into it uh brawl oh actually i actually dash. slightly enjoyed that that update but it was not the best thing ever 11 sure. 11 was 
the most disappointing reveal I've ever experienced well, in a Street Fighter game. <laughs> well, I think I think the whole thing is the fact that Eleven ended up being a bonus character, though. People thought he was the fifth oh, Final no, Street I, Fighter I get, Five character. I get that, but I mean. Did we need him? He's he's literally yeah, just random I mean, select. I mean, it seems like they're <laughs> setting up like, okay, we're building this up towards three. So maybe six, whenever that eventually is a thing, can take place after three. And I, I, and I got to say, Rose, cool. like, as Jared Edinger said, Rose looked really cool. And Dan is Dan. You know, Dan is Dan, whatever. Oh, Rose looked really cool. I will say Dan was my fucking highlight. This, <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, one, he's Dan, right? Dan is, Dan is the best for a million reasons, but... Uh, his taunts have always been my favorite thing. And now, uh, although I, okay, there's, this is a double-edged sword. One, when Dan taunts now, he gets like comic book bubbles with his taunt in Japanese above his head, but yeah. they got rid of, uh, his taunt where he says, Zakenna, which if you speak Japanese, that's basically the equivalent of fuck you, which I always thought was <laughs> really funny because he uh -huh. would just jump through the air with his fist raised, shouting the F word at his opponent, <laughs> which as, as a college Japanese student, I abused the hell out of that taunt, but Oh, sure. I, I wish it was, still I do there. love, I do love that his, that his V skills, or at least one of his V skills where he taunt cancels out of his specials that it, that it charges his opponents V uh V gauge yeah, too. It doesn't oh charge only his own gauge. It charges his opponent's gauge too, which is perfect. And yeah. um, you know, I, I will say, yeah, I mean, you're right. The the presentation overall wasn't the most exciting thing, but I thought Dan and Rose are both pretty cool. And Eleven being a bonus character doesn't bother me. As Maximilian said, he seems like he's gonna maybe be this game's Mokujin, and that's fine. Yeah. You know, he's not the last character. And look, at the end of the day, any game that's giving me the revival of a rival school's character. I can't hate. I can't even mm. dislike. Yeah. I have to like it because it's a rival school's character. So that's fair. That's I, that's the presentation I'm looking forward to is when they go into Akira. Yeah, I, I am That'd definitely be, excited to see that, too. I'd be amazing if they I, it probably won't happen. But if a Power Stone character ended up being the fifth, oh. <laughs> that would be hype. You know what, though? Or a Darkstalkers character. Don't mm. tease me with Power Stone. I, I can't. <laughs> I need one. Why is Power Stone one not on Switch? I'm I'm gonna come out and say that Power Stone Two was no good. It it just wasn't good. It was trying to be it Smash never Brothers. I've mm. I've never I played I've seen a little bit of uh, the original uh, Power Stone play, but I've not not seen any of two. Oh man, Power Stone One is is incredible. Power Stone Two doubles down on goofy stage mechanics and traps and stuff like that, mm. and is more oh. four player original Smash Brothers ish, and it just doesn't pull it off. I don't know. Hmm. Some people really love that game. I'm not one of them. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> I could ramble <laughs> about random Capcom BS forever. Uh, let's go ahead and throw up a, our next story, which is sure to delight the hell out of Derek. Hell yeah. And that is Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart has a release date, June 11th. And uh, I'm so hyped. thank God, man, this so is the hyped. reason Derek went balls to the wall <laughs> trying to find a PlayStation five in the first it place. Is, so. Because I got I just did it on the on the I was like, yeah, we'll start looking around. And I realized how difficult it was. It's like, oh, God, I better get this before, you know, it comes out because who knows when it's going to be a thing. And uh, who <laughs> got one? I'm all set for it. Yeah. June 11th. Perfect. Yeah, gimme, I'm so is, excited. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Yeah. yeah, I am I am really hyped to play this, probably not nearly as much as Derek, but this is one of those games that just looks like it'll be such an awesome showcase for what the PS5 can do. Yeah. And I uh, yeah. I just hope my my hope is that they reveal or or not reveal, but they enable support for storage expansions on the PS5 by then cuz I'm already out of space. And right. I'm getting I, this. Game. I'm going into this uh, expecting uh, into the PS5 expecting to do a lot of like <laughs> file not, management. File management basically yeah. is like, all right, well, I'm not playing this right now, so here you go, get rid of that for now, and then you know just yeah. swap and swap and all that. Yeah, oh, I've already been playing that game. Like I, I, uh, yeah. I is one of the reasons I'm looking forward to finishing last of part two. It's not just that I can't wait to see how it ends and I can't, it's also because finishing it allows me to free up 86 gigs or whatever. Oh I'm man. Five for other stuff. Yeah. So, so yeah, my yeah. strategy as unsightly as it is, is that all my PS4 stuff goes on a USB hard drive 
which mm-hmm. I, I built myself. I, I just bought like a hard drive and hooked it up to a little cable. It's real ugly though. <laughs> and I hate that I have uh-huh. this really nice white space age console. And then just this like <clears throat> USB cable hanging out of it with a dingy old hard drive <laughs> hooked up to it. And I'm like, that's where my PS4 games live. Um, yeah. But even, even just PS5 stuff, those games are huge. I mean, mm, I've, yeah. I, I think I got sent a code for NBA 2K21 for the PS5, and that game is like 100 gigabytes. It's ridiculous. Good Lord. Um, but I'm already kind of sort of playing the song and dance where I have to delete stuff. And then uh, I've got so many screenshots and video clips because just like the Switch, now that it's real easy on the PS5, I capture so much additional stuff. And almost every trophy comes with a 4k video clip attached to it so your space just gets eaten up but that said those does those clips get deleted (laughs) nope you have to go and delete them yourself (laughs) yep so that that is one thing go ahead Derek. i was just saying i'm looking at the three games i got to see how big they were like how much storage space they did 66 gigs for demon souls 105 for miles morales and 31 for sackboy it's like jeez they're huge so games. I mean, they're beautiful. You know where that space is going, but yeah. it, it is ridiculous. Taking it back to Ratchet and Clank, though, because that's what we're really here for. Um, let me see. Audible we, in the I will chat find says, out how to turn off those clips because I can. I, I don't. I don't need my space getting yep. sucked up like that. There's a way, right. I'm sure. But uh, real there quick, is. Audible in the chat says thoughts on the theory that the female Lombax is named Rivet. I'll, I'll throw that to you, Derek, because I'm not a ratchet. I've, I've not seen that theory because I've been mostly staying away. I know there's a lot of theories regarding the um, the uh, other Lombax. I, I don't. I I, I have the one one theory is also uh, just because of comments made by one of the developers uh, has people wondering if the other Lombax is trans. Um, that's a that's been a thought. Um, and I've not seen this whole rivet thing, but honestly, that's a pretty good name, Ratchet and Rivet. It is. I like Ratchet that. and Rivet. I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I like everything I've on that though. I'm just I, I keep watching this trailer on repeat and the, and the PlayStation's Twitter announcement, and I just I'm I'm being drawn right back into why I'm so excited for this game in the first place. Not as excited as Derek is, but I'm I'm like you, Steve. I'm up there for sure. I'm like I'm 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 gonna get this as soon as I can at launch and play it. Uh, even if I'm not going to look quite at the 15 out of 10 hype level Derek is, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited for this. So break room arcade, Brandon, uh, accessible, accessible way to play through Ratchet and Clank. Not really. Most of the games, if you have a PlayStation three, yes. Otherwise, uh, mm. not really because, yeah. uh, at least with PlayStation three, you can play through the original trilogy. Thanks to the collection. Uh, you have access to, crack in time tools of destruction quest for booty uh and <laughs> basically all the story important games that you would that you might want for rift apart i don't think they're necessary but they get they show you where they got to at this point um and i i think you know the, the only ratchet game that ever came out on ps4 is the one based on the movie which is fine not the best but it's fine um mm. But yeah, unfortunately, Beautiful if you game. want to play the Ratchet, yeah, oh god, it's gorgeous. But if you want to get, um, uh, if you want to play through uh, and experience those ones, unfortunately, you're just going to need a PS3. I'd love more, more yeah. of a collection because uh, they are <laughs> so much fun. And I've been doing, I've been doing a um, play playthrough series. I've played through the first four games already for uh, personal streams, just to get people like, hey, this is why you should pay attention to Ratchet and Clank. And I, um stopped for a moment just to get to take a little break because ratchet and clank games i love them but you're basically doing the same thing a lot <laughs> you know mm-hmm. it doesn't change up the gameplay quite as much or is as short as a castlevania series for example They're a bit right. longer than that so i'm taking a little break to play some hollow knight um but ratchet and clank uh is gorgeous i'm looking forward to getting back to it uh get through really if there's if you have a choice of ratchet games to play uh Tools of Destruction, Quest for Booty, Crack in Time, and um, uh, what was the other one? The uh, Into Dimension. Oh God, I'm blanking on it. Oh, I don't. I know which one. I can't remember the name of it. Yeah, Derek's going to the shelf. Um, 
in the meantime, hey, it's Dingo, uh, is in the chat with a little context, saying the trans theory comes from the fact that the past Ratchet and Clank game stated plainly that female Lombaxes don't have tails, and this one does. So that is interesting. Okay. I didn't oh. know that bit of lore. Yes, Into because... The next the the, yeah, the uh, because the, they had a female Lombax in the second game, um, Angela oh, okay. Cross, and she was a. They, they clearly said she is a Lombax, but she was taller than Ratchet and had no tail. Um, so the theory is okay. that uh, that would explain the theory. Um, okay, for why. Um, Adoodle says uh, they said in the blog post that you'll be you'll be feeling rosy soon when talking about the female Lombax Rosie maybe being an allusion to Rosie the Riveter. So I guess that's where the rivet name comes from. So that makes sense. There's a lot of stuff to unpack here in terms of where the story could be going and who this, this Lombax could be, this other Lombax could be. I am, I'm going to tell you, I'm not here for the lore, but this game is gorgeous. I mean, <laughs> yeah, there's not, a, I mean, you don't have to worry too much about the lore. It's something I can geek out about just because I've been f playing it for so long, but you can still have just tons yeah. of fun with this game because of the crazy weapons, the uh, gorgeous visuals, and it's going to be funny. Dr. Nefarious is the villain again. He is always hilarious. Uh, nice. One of my favorite villains. Um, it's a foregone conclusion that uh, the uh, Captain Quark is going to be in it. He's always funny. Right. So, yeah. Nice. <laughs> well, the, so the other... down for this game. The other like last exciting thing about this is that the, the announcement of this release date brings us one step closer to the announcement of the release date for Horizon Forbidden West, which is what I'm fucking do you think, flipping do you out think about. That's going to be a uh, holiday title. That yeah. makes sense as a holiday. I, I'm title thinking. To me. I'm thinking either holiday or possibly like late, late, late summer. Mm -hmm. I could I could see like maybe September, but it, it like yeah I, I guess like maybe September October for Horizon, but if not, then yeah holiday I would say. But yeah, I do I, think it's going to make it this year. I, I don't think it's going to get pushed next year. I agree with that. I think that it's definitely a 2021 game. I feel like it's I feel like it's the holiday game, though. The one you bring up the end of the year with. Probably is. Uh, just yeah. to maximize those holiday sales, right? Consoles. Mm -hmm. yeah. Usually you want a big I, game to go along with your PS5 sales. And you'll be mm -hmm. happy, Ash. I do plan on playing Horizon pretty relatively soon. Basically, get through Persona. Uh, play a little bit of Gravity Rush just to take a little, have a shorter game to enjoy, and then mm. jump into Horizon. Oh, I yes. can't wait. To, I can't wait for your re reactions to it. It's so good, man. It's so good. <laughs> so, heading into yet another story that'll thrill Derek. Let's go ahead and get this next one up on the screen. So, Spiritfarer has uh, shown off their 2021 roadmap for the game, uh, which is basically free post-launch DLC. We have... Uh, Lily, the set, the spring 2021 update, which uh, brings with it a new spirit, more story content, improved co-op, and some uh, quality of life stuff. Uh, much the same for the Beverly update. Uh, we get new buildings and a new spirit, along with more quality of life updates. And then Jackie and Daria, which is uh, two new spirits, a new island, uh, and a new event. I'm not quite sure what they mean by new event. Uh, I'm not but entirely I, sure about that either. It's but I regardless, gotta, I got to say, yeah, um, this the, the game's already amazing and I have not beaten it myself just because I played on PC. I don't play on PC a whole lot. And it's me just building up the uh, effort, you know, the, the uh, like, all right, I, I like got to get play buy it again on switch and then play through what I already did it before. So that's the rough part about it, about it. But um God, this game's gorgeous. God, it's yeah. so much fun to play. It yeah, is, you it, just love it. It is. I, I do want to pick it up. It's it's thirty bucks, and it's 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 thirty bucks. was a little bit more expensive than most others, but it's also gorgeous, and it's getting completely free updates. That's amazing uh, to have it just add that much more value, and it feels like. Um, Oh, okay. Uh, uh, Azran says, "Event is the term the game uses for resource resource collection mini games, like the bo like bottling lightning." Oh, okay. cool, cool. That's, that's when oh, you okay. have a bit more active um, stuff that you can do. I've not never played it on uh, in co op, um, but when I did play, uh, you know, uh, just on my own, I just enjoyed. It. I it, it it's a type of game that if I'm just relaxing in bed with uh, Amy at night. She's playing a little bit of Stardew Valley. This is like what I would play alongside her. Nice. Just gotcha. Something nice and easy to enjoy. Mm -hmm. 
Nice. Uh, Rob Arman X asks if the game is on Xbox Series X. I believe it's basically there through Xbox One compatibility, but I don't believe it's enhanced in any way. It's on Game Pass, as a few mm-hmm. folks in chat have mentioned. So mm-hmm. I, I think if you have it, you can pick it up there and play it. Uh, not a lot to say on this. It's it's a great no. game, like Derek said. Mm-hmm. I still need to finish it. I've played enough of it to know that I really like it. It's just where's the time <laughs> but um <laughs> yeah. I, I i will play it when i get a chance to slow down a bit um there's there's another game i'm playing right now all three of us are playing right now which we'll talk about later on after we get through these stories um but man the good news train for derek <laughs> keeps keeps pulling into the station this one well, i'm not sure if this is i'm not sure how he feels this about this one uh, yeah. let's throw this up on the screen so this comes from Wario64, and I'm sure all y'all have already heard this, but Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, 3, and Melody of Memory are all coming to Epic Game Store uh, for PC. Exclusively. 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 Yeah, I'm sure this is a timed exclusive because oh, more than likely. every single mm-hmm. <laughs> EGS exclusive is timed. Um, damn. it's So it, it's a good get, great for PC gamers who have not had a chance to play the the series and all that, the thing that got me, they're full price. I'm sorry. Well, yeah, you can get. It might get be all, a good get. It right? might be a good get because yeah. the Square Square isn't really well known for their great PC ports. Let's just put it out there. They yeah, don't have the true. best track record when it comes to PC ports. And so the fact that you can't necessarily trust that these PC ports are going to be the business and the fact that they're full price and you can get them so much more cheaply. Yeah, I think you can get the story so far, which is basically all the stuff that was on PS4 plus Kingdom Hearts 3 for about 60 bucks. Yeah. 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 I'm I'm more worried about what the PC community is going to do with these games. That's that's probably the more most (laughs) that's exciting thing about this is the mods but exciting and horrifying in equal measure yeah 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 i I mean you'll you'll get your your share of disgusting disgusting mods for this but you you might also get some really cool stuff i'd i'd like to see additional characters put into the game or or you know wholesome mods uh yeah I, I actually think, Evernight studio playable Kyrie mod that'd be that'd be cool that would be hype Play yes. is, i mean they because they, they have a bit of a move set for her now <laughs> hey it's well and they have the ps2 style uh model for Kyrie in in melody of memory so there actually is a model sure. for them to work from both ps2 and uh ps4 style nice Hey, it's Dingo in the chat says Thomas the Tank Engine boss fight, which, yeah, <laughs> yeah. we all know that's going to happen. Honestly, I just imagine the final boss of Kingdom, the original Kingdom Hearts, like, you know, the when he's a big ship. Just make that Thomas. <laughs> oh, that's perfect, actually. The the Ansem Seeker of Darkness shit. That's perfect. Uh, and and Brandon, Breaker Arcade says, I'm ready for Kermit the Frog to become a Keyblade Master. Me, I think we're all ready for Kermit the Frog. <laughs> I just wanted to wait around like, yay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. That's the thing is there actually are a lot of really cool mods that the potential for really cool, genuinely awesome mods is massive here. It's just, you know, in lockstep with that, the potential for a lot of really, really, really horrifically uh, <laughs> NSFW mods is also massive. I mean, but, that's for any game, really. Yeah, no, that's true. I think it's like I, I was saying this before the, or when we were talking before we started recording. It's just a fact that, you know, all the characters in this that you play as are essentially kids, mostly. There are a couple of, of exceptions like Terra and Aqua. But generally, they're all minors, so I really hope it doesn't get too weird, you know? Yeah. And by that, I mean weird at all, but yeah. I mean, the thing is, I, I'm not really going to be paying attention to this. I got sure, my Kingdom sure. Hearts. I'm I, only going to be playing it on console, so whatever. I will likely right. only interact with this through through articles made about mods. You, yeah. you know somebody's gonna post like, look look at these crazy Kingdom Hearts mods. Here's Goku as Mickey Mouse or <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah, which you know those will be fun. But yeah, the rest of it, I'm I'm not super excited about this. If I want to play these, I'll play them on PlayStation. I I really have no right. desire to have these on my PC. I I don't know. Hmm. I, I'm sure a market for this exists. It's just not one that I care about much. Um, well, and but, I, no. I think it's not the one that even a lot of existing Kingdom Hearts fans will. I, I think the, the whole EGS exclusivity really puts a damper on it, even for people who are excited about Kingdom Hearts coming to PC. That and the fact that they're all full price, 
Now, like there, there are so many buts and asterisks to this announcement that make even people who were looking forward to Kingdom Hearts on PC maybe kind of recoil a bit. Yeah, I EGS mean, is not a popular place. I don't think it necessarily is fair <laughs> that it's unpopular, yeah. uh, but it is, and that's that's just the reality of the situation. That means it's pretty unfortunate. But I bet after a year, these will be on Steam and. Some people will go pick them up if there's anybody left that still wants them. Um, mm-hmm. I, I just, I, I wonder if it was EGS offered Square an open-ended deal. Just, hey, we want some kind of exclusive. And <laughs> Square was like, well, we're not giving you Final Fantasy, so here. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah. I imagine it was I mean, probably, I could see that. Yeah, some something where they wanted a big name franchise and Square thought, well, you can already get Kingdom Hearts everywhere else, so here. <laughs> you can have these games and people probably won't buy them, but whatever. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, and, I mean, I mean, good good news they, for the folks that do want it, but hate consoles for some reason. Yeah. And they, I right. also saw that they announced that Axiom Verge 2 is going to be EGS exclusive for a while on PC. Although it is still coming to Switch, though. So that, that, right. That it's still coming out to other consoles. The, yeah. But yeah. If, if you want to play it on PC for, I guess, yeah. that first year or whatever, EGS yeah, right. a-, a doodle in the chat makes probably the most salient point I could I could imagine for this. Uh, he says people will double dip on a Steam sale not for EGS full price, which I agree. If I yeah. if I wanted it on PC, it would have to be ten bucks on Steam, and I would just add it to my library because I know it would never go away. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I'm yeah. definitely not gonna pay fifty sixty dollars for these games. They're they're not worth that anymore. Sorry. Right. Uh, anyway, um, yeah. oh, go ahead. Rob, be really quick, Steve, before we move on, this isn't in our official lineup of news, but I did want to take this opportunity to remind folks that there is a Final Fantasy VII Remake concert happening in Japan tomorrow, Ooh. and exclusive announcements for this concert have All been right. teased. So uh, for those of you who are hype about FF7 Remake stuff like we are, uh, you know, keep your ear to the ground tomorrow for some sort of... Uh, the the popular theory seems to be that we're going to get maybe a PS5 and PC version announcement tomorrow. Please. Um, but either way, it sounds like we're going to have something to talk about on Monday for TNT. But you if you don't want to we'll wait get... that long... yeah, I'm not going to wait that long if that's the announcement Same. we get. I will hop on uh, right. tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it all depends. If it's... I don't think we have much to talk about if it's just going to be an upgrade like Crash, Band- like Crash 4 is getting. Depends um, on it depends on the extent of the upgrade. If they're going to include that Tifa scenario that was cut in true. development, you know that's that's worth talking about. It's it's um, worth it if they fix yeah. the door. The door, <laughs> right? The texture issue with the no, door. No, fix everything but the door. That door <laughs> yeah, needs but the door. Make the yeah. door worse. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so you know, definitely look forward to news dropping tomorrow on something. FF Seven Remake. Do we have, do what time that is? Uh do we? Let's see. All I'm seeing here on the Push Square article is that the concert is tomorrow, not the time the concert is at. I'll uh, take a look. Yeah, I'm looking. Interesting. But, but I'm what? so excited. Please let it be the PS5 version. Please, please, please. please. <laughs> I would be so happy. Okay, it starts at 5 p.m. Uh, Japan time, which is 8 a.m. UK time. Which I believe which is, is midnight here. Midnight, our time, which I'll be oh, up. God, so, so <laughs> yeah, I shall know right away. Yeah. yeah, I'll be up and yeah. So my, my, so my wife you... and I are planning on having having a few drinks tonight. So maybe I'll just get on and drunkenly oh, slur yeah. about <laughs> three a.m. Eastern. Yeah, I'll be asleep. <laughs> Seven remake. Yeah, yeah. If you get All a right, notification well, at three a.m. from GVG saying you up, it's Ash. Oh, yeah. uh, Robert <laughs> Manick says it could be. It's probably just ports or Ever Crisis. Ever Crisis. You know what? I'm curious. I, I'm curious. Oh, enough I'm curious to, too. Yeah. I, I might actually now that I know that it's one a.m. my time and it's Friday night and I have a long weekend. That's true. I might be there. I might be there. For yeah, that. you and I might be up, Steve. I'll definitely yeah. be up. Um, what well, one thing I do not think it is. I've seen some people say, "Well, maybe we're getting part two news." No, no, we're not. This is no. not going to be. They're not going to exclusively reveal part two news at a concert. Not yeah. going to happen. Agreed. Yeah. Although they have shown trailers for games, I don't think they've not announced games at concerts, but they've shown new trailers for games at concerts. Yeah, they might tease something very briefly for part two, but this almost certainly to me reads as a enhanced version announcement for ps5 and pc yeah yeah i, I mean agree. honestly all they need to do to tease you for final fantasy 7 part 2 give us a render of the new design for yuffie or yuffie kate sith uh sid or vincent yeah that's true yeah but you know yeah. i I'm, I'm just gonna be real with y'all if we got anything resembling a trailer for 7 remake 2 it would be your typical 
dumb Square Enix tees where it's like a feather <laughs> floating through yeah. the air. And then you see Cosmo yeah. Canyon from 98 miles away. And then you see the uh-huh. title and that's it. <laughs> That'd be it. it would, that's all it would oh, be. Okay. You're totally right. I can't actually just remind you, since you talk about Cosmo Canyon. What the hell is Bo- Bugenhagen going to look like in the remake? Oh, I'm that so excited. Because how does he question. float? Is he just floating yeah. on a cloth or is he riding a crystal ball? I could never tell. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, young Ben Kenobi says, I feel like I'm spamming, but what about 16? Um, I mean, they, they, they specifically have mm. said that there's going to be FF7 remake news at this concert. They haven't said anything about 16, so... I wouldn't expect 16 news, but who knows? I'm not square. It could happen. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. All right. So let's let's keep talking about square for a little bit. I'm going to throw <laughs> our next story on. Oh, screen. this is nice news. I like this. Yeah. I, I figured we, we had to throw Ash a bone tonight as well. So trial, <laughs> trial of Mana hit 1 million units sold. Uh, and that is, you know, it launched in April of last year. 1 million is honestly a lot more than I expected from this. Uh, right? Because it kind of flew under the radar. Scene. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 been o- under a year since it came out, and uh, I reviewed it for GX, and I, I liked it a lot. It's it's a it's it's just it's a great reimagining of the original Seiken Densetsu Three, and I think what what makes me so happy about this is you know one of the things I mentioned in my review is that it's un- unapologetically and proudly old school in the sense that it it feels and plays like an action RPG from the PS2 generation. It, 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 it does not go out of its way to be bold or new or innovative or try to do something. No, it's just a good, l- pretty linear action RPG from the, that plays like it was on PS2. But people still loved it anyway, and it sold a million copies. So I'm just glad to know that there is there are legs for games like that these days. That not everything has to be trying to be something crazy and new. That there is room still for just traditional kind of more... Uh, intimate experiences i guess like that mm-hmm. i i gotta admit i was a bit turned off by the voice acting it's not it's something i wouldn't mm. mind going back it's and picking up at some point and just trying <laughs> it's I all over the place <laughs> I, I haven't even played place. the original yet i need to go th- i still need to play secret of mana as well mm-hmm. yes you um, do at least i played final fantasy adventure i got through that at least <laughs> Uh, hey, it's Dingo says, yay, Twiles of Mana, making fun of Charlotte oh, in, in Trials of Mana, because she, for some reason, yes, she's a child, but for, for the thing about, and I said this in my review too, it's not as though I think all the actors are really bad. I think the voice direction was really bad. I think they got they, they got talented people enough on, on the cast. It's that the direction was bad. So yeah, you had Charlotte saying everything with a twile and and really whiny and oh so annoying. Oh boy. Oh, so man. annoying. Yeah. Um how is the voice acting in Secret of Mana? Any better? Worse? Ah, uh, worse. Worse. Ooh. Everything about the Secret of Mana remake was significantly worse than tr- than the Trials of Mana remake. Like, yeah, Secret of Mana just all over the place was kind of a mess. It it played fine, but everything around that not no, you could tell that it was very much on a budget. <laughs> yeah, I oh, I wow. did. I only played a demo of this with with you, Ash. I think at E three twenty nineteen. Did we? I guess so. Yeah, we did. We did we, play we had that appointment with Square. Oh the, right, yeah, where we uh, met up with uh, some Nintendo Life folks. Yeah, and we That's uh, right. we played through uh, that and Final Fantasy VII remake. I think they were showing at the same time. Yeah, they were showing them both. Yeah, yeah, and we were cycling through different stations. I, I liked the demo a lot, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had just come off the Final Fantasy VII remake review when that happened. And so I was taking a break. <laughs> I was done. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I, sure. I, I weren't doing much. Yeah, I, I had some some time on my hands, but I didn't want to yeah. play a video game for a while. Uh, right. That being said, I, I want to go back and pick this up because I do have a soft spot for those kind of old school somewhat campy rpgs the ones Mm -hmm. where people were still getting a feel for how 3d rpgs and and fully voice acted rpgs should work and Mm -hmm. i definitely get that vibe from trials of mana so i absolutely 100 carries that vibe throughout yeah i definitely want that then because uh yeah i i think my favorite of those kind of baby step rpgs if you will <laughs> the it, those first baby steps into the 3d era grandia 2 is way up there for me in terms of oh those grandia 2 is a masterpiece RPGs. it, it really is so many rpgs oh, i've not grandia played that 2. i need to play 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Good Lord. I still need to play through that on Switch. Still, I need to finish it. I, I started it, and it's really good. But uh, I would I would really like to pick up Trials. Maybe <laughs> go, throw it on the 2021 to-do list, I guess. Mm-hmm. Right. That's huge. Um, hey, it's Dingo makes a couple of great points. Uh, first, they say, I, I unir- unironically love the Trials dub because it's such a mess. And yeah, I, I kind of pointed that out in my review as well. Like, it, it it's not good, a lot of it, but it's appreciably and lovably bad it's not just like horrible um there's it's just weird because it goes it goes from like some scenes being pretty damn good to other scenes being like what the were they thinking <laughs> and i think that's kind of because you never know what you're going to get with it and i think that's kind of what i liked about the, the dub. crazy thing is i played the japanese version like listened to the japanese dub of it as well and it's not any better <laughs> no yeah yeah um they also say i like some choices from the secret of mana remake like sprite using they them pronouns that's a great point i'd forgotten yeah. about that and that i thought was really cool yeah that is cool mm-hmm. yeah I, I i don't have a lot to say on this beyond that <laughs> but no. I, I think that it's yeah. cool one million units i'm really happy for because obviously publishers love to point at performance like this and say this is how you get a sequel so hopefully you know this shows that there's yeah. interest in further remakes of beloved square ips like chrono trigger but i right. would... <laughs> and i know a lot of people would like to see a legend of mana remake as well i just yeah. want to see that soundtrack come back um but this is a good day i love a, i love a square heavy news day we got kingdom hearts we got trials of mana we got potentially f07 remake coming tomorrow this is <laughs> nice i enjoy this yeah it, it honestly isn't a bad news day um yeah. speaking of which we have one final piece of news which Let's just get the temperature on this. I'm going to throw it on the screen. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm really grateful to Derek right now because uh, last episode we had talked about the fact that uh, Platonic teased that they had an announcement coming up. And uh, I was ready to run it. And Derek, you know, <laughs> uh, aired on the side of caution and said, what if it's nothing? And uh, so here's the announcement. Ukulele developer Platonic Games establishes Platonic Friends publishing label, announcing its own new game soon. So, uh, yeah. Happy so, birthday. I mean, it's you cool. Know what? Go ahead. Go ahead, Ash. Okay. okay. Well, I'll, I'll say this. On its, on its face, this is an exciting news. And I totally get that. But, you know, they they have proven themselves with Impossible Lair, right? Mm. And, you know, I just got finished reviewing Cyber Shadow, which was the, the, the first delivery of the new publishing arm of Yacht Club Games. So, you know, the fact that yet on its face, Yacht Club Games saying, hey, we're going to become a publisher now, too, that wouldn't be exciting. But if they've got the eyes to pick the right games to publish, just like they have the skills to develop great games then this could eventually turn into something to be excited about. Again, that brought us Cyber Shadow, and Cyber Shadow is a great game. So, yeah, right. this specific announcement, not very exciting, but I am excited to see what the people who made Impossible Air look for in a great game, because they can clearly make one. So I think this could turn into be something potentially exciting. Well, I, I they've already have three developers on board so far, uh, All Interactive, who's known for BPM bullets per minute, for Braz, which is known for Slime San, San and Okie Doki Co., uh, which did OK Golf. And I've heard good things about all of these. I played a little bit of Slime San. I have too, actually. It's pretty fun. I have um, Slime San. I haven't tried it. Uh, Limited Run Games sent me a copy out of nowhere. And maybe I'll try it. I don't know. It looks really cool. <laughs> mm-hmm. it Apparently says, uh, Aunt- oh, go ahead, Derek. No, you got it. Uh, Andy Day says, I guess the rumor is they play Platonic is working on something about Capital B, the villain in Ukulele, which, okay, if, if that's actually what they're doing, that could be neat. I wondered if they might try to go for that Diddy Kong nostalgia next. That would be cool. That's, that's true. Diddy Kong Racing. Yeah, Diddy Kong Racing. That's true. I mean, and uh, who was it that uh, Andy Day also said, I know it's a bit unpopular, but I enjoy the original Ukulele and I'd really like the announcement of the official Ukulele too. Yeah, that's the thing is that at the end of the day, especially the Switch version, pretty pretty decent game it was a good game it wasn't great but i thought it was a good game after all the horrible launch issues got ironed out so i i, I do think playtonic deserves a bit more uh consideration oh, no, they, won, they won my respect with impossible layer uh, as far impossible as the original ukulele really eh. yeah it's it's fine it's not great it's fine yeah yeah um but yeah i mean there, there's a lot of avenues they can go with this um i think they have a good you know 
they're in a good direction so far and could have come up with something good. They said they, they have also said that they're revealing its own top secret new title currently in the works in the near future. Who knows what that could be? Could be the whole capital B thing. I know they said they, when they were making the original ukulele, they wanted all the characters able to have their own spinoff, which looking at the cast of characters, I'm not sure if that's possible. I, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't um, see how that's necessarily doable. Some some of them maybe, but the vast majority, I don't see how that could happen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. Um, Rob Arman X was a good idea. Blast Core would be a good foundation for a villain based game. That's true. Yeah. That is yeah, capital B core. That that could that could certainly work. <laughs> could, uh could do um Oh man. <laughs> would they go for Jet Force Gemini? <laughs> oh my god. I would Can love it, man. <laughs> I w- uh imposter says trouser spinoff yeah, okay yes trouser is one of the very few supporting characters in ukulele who i would support a full game spin-off uh, of. you just make trousers it because he's wall street kid <laughs> trouser yeah is well also, and, and trousers is great just because you know i i have 12 year old humor i just yeah i, think I was I'm gonna say when it comes to my oh, dumb right humor then. so har, har. that's why i yeah exactly <laughs> all oh. right so i think i think we've covered everything and we're going to be on track to give a pretty lengthy post show here which i'm excited about but i want to share just a little quick good vibes anecdote with our audience before we sign off because i always say i'm going to do this we have a whole channel for it down in our discord but this is so so cool and i meant to shout it out last week but i forgot in the chaos that is this show one of our members a former ep notch 212 uh just clinched the world record for any percent speed running of Shenmue 3. Holy like, crap. As really? of right now, he holds the world record for both a uh, new game plus and just a regular playthrough of the game, which is insane. So I just want to throw out a huge congratulations yeah. to him. That is so damn nice. cool. He had never That's heard awesome. of Shenmue until I went to E3 with him and got into the series after he saw me like lose my whole goddamn mind when they announced <laughs> three. And now he's the world record holder for, for the latest entry in the series. So congrats, my friend. It's really cool wow. that you did that. So I cool. love that a member of the GV gang holds a world record in anything. <laughs> yeah. So congrats. How, uh... Hats off to you if I had a hat. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's kind of funny because the... Um... You know, the latest uh, what happened was on Shenmue 3. Yeah, I saw that. Right. I, I, I'm in that episode in a weird way. There oh, is you? video footage of this face in that episode because uh, Matt McMuscles clipped out the portion of Sony's official broadcast where everyone started losing their minds at Shenmue 3. And I'm like right up in the front crying. I didn't even <laughs> notice. That's yeah. awesome. Well, because it. nobody notices because one guy stands up and he's like, oh, and I'm literally right two rows in front of him <laughs> crying. Oh, man, I have to look back at that. <laughs> yeah. So if, if you ever have seen that that press conference, I'm, I'm hiding like in the lower right hand corner of the screen somewhere. <laughs> um that's awesome. Yeah, so so that is uh, really cool, and th- that is a great episode, by the way, of of what happened. Because as much as I love Shenmue Three, there are myriad problems with it that hopefully someday I'll talk about here on GVG. But uh, yeah, I I, I really uh, am proud of of the fact that one of our folks uh, managed to snag a world record. That's that's really really mm-hmm. cool. That is really cool. Uh, so with and, that, and don't don't lie, Steve. It? It's a great episode of what happened because you're in it. That's, well, that's obvi- the real reason. Yeah, obviously, the reason. I yeah. mean, I'm, I make yeah. every YouTube video better, except for the bad YouTube right. videos, uh, except for the bad. <laughs> of which should there we are. also have a nice shout out to uh, Brandon? Yes, yeah. it's his birthday. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah, I shouted it out on Twitter and in our Discord. Uh, but yeah, happy it again today in good vibes. Happy birthday to the one and only Brand. Well, we have a few Brandons that we love here. At we GVG. have a few Brandons, but Brinkwood Arcade, you know, the miracle himself. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Miracle, yes. birthday boy Brandon. Uh, hope you're having a great day out there. What is it, 27? Which makes me feel old. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah. I know, right? He is he is officially uh, out. He was born after the NES era, which makes me feel all kinds of weird. But uh, yeah. Yeah, man. I, I don't want to turn this into into me lamenting my age, but happy birthday, Brandon. <laughs> you know we love you well, here. Everything you Alexia do for this and channel. Alexia and Luxiel is also their birthday. Yes, today. I was going to say. Wow, geez, so many birthdays. Yeah, yeah Alexia holy Alexia crap. In our, uh, in our, in our Discord birthday. community. So happy birthday to everybody. <laughs> Seriously. Our doodle saying, I was born the year the PS2 came out. That 
like is a gut check of epic proportions. Yeah. I was yeah, working. It hurts. I had a job. <laughs> Anyway, I've got to sign off. This is making me feel like the impending <laughs> yeah, threat this of is, death. This is painful. It's painful. Yeah. Um, so, oh, go ahead. Before we do, actually, no, we can actually. I can mention this in the post yeah. show. There's a reason All right. to do it. So, but, yeah. with with that, with that stark reminder of my own mortality, we've covered all the major headlines from today's news. Before we sign off, we have to give a special thanks to our patrons at the producer tier for helping to make this show happen we literally could not do this without you and i know y'all know after 48 episodes where i'm <laughs> headed next we have to give a massive massive non-dancing thanks to injury thank you to our patrons at the executive producer tier and in no particular order because that's now how i believe it works because last time i said it was alphabetical and i was wrong uh those fine folks are jonathan belmare brandon bovia rob our man x Dan and Twistle, Z Patty, Hyrule Hermit, Sky Blue Flames, Adam O'Sullivan, Richard Herrera, Michael Phone, Floating Mew, Christopher, The D Pad, Guillaume Monet, Vesmio, Waffle King, Nick Waterman, Kitty Kong Facts, Vedron Hotik, Macalau, John, Joshua Hunter, Evernight Studio, Benny Yao, Shadow the Cat, Azran127, Ken Roulet09, Jake Pelka, Geller, Shiny Turkey, Titus Malvolio, Charlie Bird, Mitchell Herring, Lucky Wonderfish, Top Dog 23100, Brooke, Young Ben Kenobi, Charles Zaz, Douglas Comics, Andrew Medeiros, Orem M, Brady Power, Phantom23, Scott Barber, our returning friend to the EP squad, Patrick Harrison. Welcome back. Rocks the Cat. Yes. Loyal Dingo. Flaming Highwayman. Sean Garrett. The Legend of Groose. Eddie B. Kai Ed. Kit Fisto. West Egg. Master Lynx. Sean Davis. Deaneth. Jackson Jordan. Michael McCaw. Matthew Wong, Ashish Joshi, Goron Amber, Straight Lace, Seth Walker, Hubi, Marcos Conchas, who, by the way, I've never properly credited. He is the one that con uh, commissioned the chicken review. So when you see that, you can thank him for it. Thank you for commissioning <laughs> the wildest video I will ever make. Moving on, we have Wolf X Blake and Moon Macarons. K Kane, I almost said Kanye. I almost say Kanye every time. Kane, <laughs> Captain <laughs> Finlandia, oh, 60 yeah. minutes in 60 seconds, The Game Orb, Dano the Artist, Synchro Lord, Brainchild, My Mom, Hi Mom, Darkumi87, The Flying Tacos, and Scuff196. Again, thank you all so, so much for your incredible generosity. I am humbled every night to be able to read those names, but remember, you too can become a patron a patron over at patreon.com slash GV gaming where you can watch today's news tonight live for as little as five dollars a month. That gets you a slew of other benefits. Feel free to check it out on the page. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to Good Vibes Gaming for more good times like these. And until next time, good night and good vibes. Happy Valentine's Bye, everyone. everybody. Good night, everybody. See you Monday. <laughs>